And 13 News at 5 begins tonight with breaking news. The U.S. State Department and the Israeli military say there will be consequences for an Iranian missile attack on Israel. The military believes Iran fired around 180 missiles at the country. And about an hour and a half later, Iran says it had concluded its attack. The U.S. Navy stopped some of those missiles from reaching Israel today. NBC's Richard Engel reports tonight from Lebanon on the growing conflict in the Middle East. So what we witnessed here and what our colleagues witnessed on the Israeli side of the border uh, it w was quite extraordinary. We saw two distinct waves of ballistic missile attacks. Uh, we saw the uh, missiles that appeared to have crossed through, at least some of them crossed through Lebanese airspace heading toward Israel, and they were being blown up in the sky at very high altitude, so high that we couldn't hear the explosions, but we could see the impacts uh, as the, as the as the ballistic missiles were, were, were destroyed in, in mid-flight. Um, it seems that they were destroyed not just by Israel's Iron Dome system, but by an, a variety of anti-missile defense systems, uh, including significant help from the United States. Uh, this was a, a, a significant attack. It was a large-scale attack, but it appears to have been a very ineffective attack. And now the, the, the main question is, what kind of response will there be from Israel? Will Prime Minister Netanyahu has been openly talking about the need for regime change in Iran, use this as a, as a moment? Will he capitalize on this crisis to try and uh, take, take the battle to, to Iran directly? For the last year, uh, he has been ta attacking Iran's proxies in Gaza at an enormous cost to the, to the people of Gaza. And then starting over the last uh, 48 hours or so, uh, even less than that, uh, the ground war here in Lebanon. So now we have uh, yet another phase of this this war: the ongoing war in Gaza, the new ground war in Lebanon, the air, the failed air campaign from from uh, from Iran, and and then what will tomorrow bring uh, a, a new war against Iran? There there are many open questions uh, tonight, and, and frankly, none of them have very good answers. That's Richard Engel reporting, and the president of Iran tonight is saying that missile strike is, quote, only a portion of our power. Now about 6,000 Americans have asked for more information about possibly leaving Lebanon. So the IDF reports no one was hurt in this missile attack today. However, that doesn't make it any less scary for friends and family here in central Indiana. Rich and I talked to local Jewish community leaders this afternoon, right after the missile attack on Israel. And what did they share, Rich? Well, this conflict, remember, now started almost a year ago. And the Jewish community in Indianapolis was already planning a remembrance ceremony this Monday night to remember the Hamas attack on Israel on October 7th of last year. And now that ceremony will have even greater significance with the escalation of Iran's missile attack. When October 7th happened last year and we came together, we never would have imagined that we would still be talking about it here on the first anniversary. That it's not the first anniversary of something that is now over. It is actively going on and it's even expanding, which is just horrific to all of us. None of us want this. None of us ever expected this to happen. Today, seeing events continue to unfold in Israel, uh, it is very difficult for everybody. I think just the long strain of uh, a year of conflict uh, in, in Israel um, combined with everybody here in our community knowing somebody living there who is spending their day today and their evening in, in bomb shelters. The Jewish Federation of Greater Indianapolis has its headquarters on the north side of Indianapolis. The organization reports about 18,000 Jews in the Indy area. It's just after midnight right now in Israel, seven hours ahead of us here in Indianapolis. The missile strike came in the early evening in Israel, and a few of the people that I talked to this afternoon were actually on the phone talking with people in Israel when those people were told to evacuate their homes and get to a bomb shelter. Uh, really driving home how real this conflict is impacting mm -hmm. people here. Thank you, Rich. And we've been covering this breaking news since it first broke during 13 News at noon. And we're going to keep covering it throughout the next 90 minutes. Into nightly news with Lester Holt at 630. He will have more.